children of these NHS services, both as a parent and as someone who's lost both of my parents in Ealing Hospital. Uh, I remember Ealing Hospital going up in 1979. There was such a lot of optimism attached to it. Brand new building in 1979. And, you know, what they have done to it. And those lying leaflets, when they come through the door and they say Ealing Hospital is not closing, just look around you. Look at the luxury flats that are going up in the ground. You know, yes. I've seen the STP, along with the other two, our other two MPs, Steve Pound and Veronica Sharma, as MPs, we're privy to these documents. And John mentioned shaping a healthier future. That was shafting a healthier future. <laughs> we know what that was. Um, and now we have these STPs, the Sustainable and Transform uh, Sustainable Transformation Plans. You know, London is heading for a population of 10 million. It is not sustainable what they're doing. It certainly will be transformational. Um, so, um, so, you know, this government is hell-bent on its own ideology. If you look at that Andrew Lansley Health and Social Care Act, in some ways, the NHS has ceased to exist as it was envisaged because it's become just another provider, not even the preferred provider anymore. What they're doing is really dangerous. Um, and I ask this, it's basically privatisation by stealth. Um, and it's this horrible type of Americanisation, and all this has happened in the climate of post-Brexit. Remember the £350 million a week we were meant to get for the NHS on the side of the bus, you know, complete, their knickers were on fire. You know, they told us a heck of a lot of corkies, these Tories. I mean, even in, I mean, um, yeah, but just the list could go on and on and on. Um, and so, yeah, it, and the other day, I asked a question in the uh, House of Commons about, you know, the A-level history syllabus, kids who do modern British history, suddenly the time frame of that has gone from being the 20th century to being 1951 to 1997. Isn't that a bit <laughs> suspect? Yeah, quite sad. The whole of the Atlee legacy, and I'm glad John mentioned that it was a Labour creation and we want a Labour government back again. Because all that has gone. You know, even the 1944 Butler Education Act, the NHS, we're approaching the 70th uh, birthday of the NHS. We should be wishing it a happy birthday, giving it the bumps, whatever. But instead, what do we have? Another winter crisis. Something that we've now uh, sort of learned to live with as inevitable. It doesn't have to be uh, this way. And, you know, you hear these stories. People are like, what's his name? Harry... Harry Patch, is he? The guy who talks about how he was born after the NHS. Uh, his sister's Harry's Harry last son. Harry knows he's safe. That's the dude, yeah. Okay, so he, he talks about stories of the workhouse, things were how things were before we had an NHS free at the point of demand. Um, you know, people used to have to choose between uh, sickness and having a roof over your head, those kind of choices. And we've had an NHS for 70 years, and when we come back into government, we will put the NHS at the heart of our policies again. And we will have an immediate moratorium on all of these closures on, on these sustainability and transformation plans. Remember, it was um, in 2013 when um, the a es were lost at both Hammersmith and at Central Middlesex. Um, and already, you know, I do a weekly surgery every Friday. I see the effects that that's had on my constituents, the fact that they have to travel... Certainly, Central Middlesex is a brand new one. And to replace that with, as, as Gerge said, um, uh, with uh, Northwick Park, which requires improvement from its last CCG, I think the one in 20, uh, its last, uh, sorry, what am I saying? CQC, the Quality Care Commission report. So it requires improvement in pretty much every area. And the one in 2013 was even more of a stinker. So they cut a good one, they replace it with a failing one. Um, I mean, the, no one mentioned so far the Choosing Wisely campaign. I think that's that. And again, it's another example of this horrible Americanization that we now have a prime minister who's so desperate to go for these trade deals, so desperate to, you know, she's holding hands with Trump. She should be holding him to account, not holding his hand. And she's so desperate to suck up to him for these trade deals that we've humiliated ourselves in front of the world, scraping her up to these bits. And this Choosing Wisely thing, is meant to be, um, yeah, I mean, it's basically another Americanization, it's starving the NHS of funds, our greatest national institution. And local government is worth mentioning, you know, local government. This government is very clever at displacing all of its cuts onto your Labour Council, so that's who gets blamed. I think about 60% of the budgets in 2010 
has gone. So they're doing a very difficult conjuring act. Everyone is trying to do more and more with less and less. Um, and you know, all these things are sort of joined up because if there's less funding for parks, parks are somewhere that um, people need for health benefits and all those sort of things. All these things are, uh, are joined up. Um, John mentioned the, the so-called accountable care organisations. Uh, to me, that reminds me of, you know those countries that are called Democratic Republic of? When it's called that, it means it isn't. So some they called accountable, you know, it, by golly, it isn't. So the Health Select Committee, you know, all these people have um, heaped a program on that, patients, uh, ca campaign groups. And as John pointed out, a humiliating time down on the 25th of January, uh, they had to admit, really, failure. They've got this bogus consultation now for 12 weeks, so the thing has been paused. Um, but it's their own admission of failure that it's so secretive. In fact, the early day motion that Labour tabled in the House of Commons, even <laughs> DUP MPs were, were signing up, DUPs <laughs> propping them up. I mean, they're just a joke, this government. They had a general election where they thought they could destroy me, and I'm still here. Um, but they had elections purely to, to gain more power, and they lost their majority. They're now propped up by the DUP. Even DUP MPs realise what shambles this um, accountable care organisation plan is. Um, it's not at all transparent. Um, and again, it's the model used, guess where? The United States. So it's another import from over the pond um, to... Um, and, you know, we have, it was mentioned, a president who's determined to slander our healthcare system, and he wants to see it, they want to see it, parceled off, sold off to multinational corporations. You know, even the BMA, so I'm not talking the SWP, but the British Medical Association, the BMA, has said that the government needs to clarify what safeguards will be in place to ensure that ACOs do not enable any increase in the role of independent sector providers in EU. Oh, one minute, really. Okay. Um, what else has not been said? I mean, it's been mentioned the whole Carillion disaster there, sort of a blind reliance on these private companies. We've seen it again with the um, rail franchises, Govia as well as East Coast. Group 4, we saw before when they tried to run our prisons. You know, it's this ideology before logic uh, that this government is um, hell-bent on. Um, and so, I mean, stuff we've said we'll do we will lift the 1% pay cap, because again, that's demoralising. My mother actually passed during the election, 21st of May, uh, two weeks before polling day. So I went uh, to that hospital every day from the 29th of March when she went in. And the morale, when the, act, the threat of the act is over the staff at Ealing Hospital, you know, that sort of feeds into everything. All the other stuff they've done, they've removed the nurse bursaries. So the training grants for nurses, um, the junior doctors' contracts, we've talked about the government's only quality impact assessment found that it, um, it discriminates against women who have children or want to do caring or for their own parents or whatever. So I mean, their own government said that was wrong, um, but they plough on regardless. They're just arrogant. And my colleagues who were there in the 1992 to 97 uh, major governments say it's a bit like that, everything's collapsing around their ears, so let's hope this happens. So I started with, and we're very lucky to have um, Labour councils in Ealing and Hammersmith and Jordan who wouldn't sign up to that STP, so that's very courageous of our leaders to do that. So I mean, I started with my Bevan with what they've done with the uh, A-level history curriculum. He said, didn't he, that the NHS will exist as long as there are folk there with the fight. To keep yeah. it. So we've got yeah. you know, the fact that this campaign started in 2013, we still have A&E at Ealing and Charing Cross. I mean, I know what they're coming to do. Eve was saying, when is the hospital not a hospital? 500 beds will be lost. Those things will be glorified old people's homes. If you can't go there in an ambulance, you know, we've seen all the departments of Ealing disappear bit by bit. When I was first MP, there was maternity. It's got the third highest birth rate out of 33 London boroughs. Uh, maternity's gone pediatric, it's disappearing before our eyes, but we won't let that happen. We can totally do this. The fact that they're still there is because of the success of this campaign. So let's do this, people. Thank you.